fly. Since the mid-1960s, the world's population has more than doubled. The majority of that growth has come in the areas least able to support it. As the availability of basic resources, clean water, food, and fuel become increasingly scarce, the pressures on those resources increases. Here in the West, we live in a bubble of comfort, with plenty to eat, homes to live in, and fuel for our cars. While nearly one half of the world's population is without clean drinking water, and one person in seven lives in an urban slum or refugee camp, unless we think that the problems are all over there, on any given night in the United States, there are over 700,000 homeless citizens, and they are out there tonight. In 1999, Cameron Sinclair was working in the back of a New York architectural firm. He was designing a display for lipsticks. Each one would retail for more than the average salary of a weekly salary of a woman that made, of the women that made them. And, they had, and there had to be a better use for his skills. So he created a design competition for refugee housing in Kosovo. 500 entries later, Architecture for Humanity was formed. Fast forward to December 27, 2004, one day after the South Asian tsunami. Watching in horror as the death toll mounted, a construction manager in Minnesota is contacted by AFH International with a request for help. One month later, Architecture for Humanity Minnesota was formed. Let it be local, let's make it sustainable, let's make it appropriate to the conditions, and use a collaborative process. Let us design and inspire and be useful, and let's create a space where Minnesota designers can don donate their time doing what they do best for those in the greatest need. Tsunami, Indonesia, India, Somalia, Burma, Thailand, Sri Lanka, over 200,000 people dead. With 50 houses already under construction, the Minnesota Sri Lanka Friendship Foundation needed help creating a learning center for their community. AFH Minnesota answered the call. In the summer of 2005, 20 designers spent a weekend creating five design boards. Later came the interior layouts, space planning for the library, designs for shelving, a front desk, and a computer center. The project is now complete, a relocated people, not made whole, but their lives improved by designers who stepped up and volunteered their time and skills. Hurricane Katrina, a new disaster made worse by human hands, a people rich in culture shorted by their insurance companies and abandoned by their government. Fifteen students from the University of Minnesota, along with John and Tom, dedicated a week of their time to sort out and build a transitional home and gallery space for prominent community members Keith Calhoun and Shannon McCormick. The rebuilding work continues three years after the storm. In the spring of 2006, just weeks before opening, the Hindu Temple of Minnesota was vandalized. With hopeful hearts, the temple leaders reached out to Architecture for Humanity for help. Damaged deities needed burial and broken trust needed healing. How could this happen and how could we make it right? In October of 2007, AFH Minnesota designed a memorial garden as a bridge between old and new, broken and healing, between east and west. A mandala of flowers, an outdoor home for meditation and reflection, nine plaques for nine deities, and a walking connection between the community and the temple grounds. In October 2007, AFH Minnesota, did, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In 2006, Hope Integrated Academy School for Children Victim of AIDS began collaboration with Engineers Without Borders, Minnesota, and Virginia to not only address the immediate needs of the school, but also create a plan for the future. Architecture for Humanity was asked for help. In 2008, 2008, AFH Minnesota created a schematic site plans while Engineers Without Borders was in Africa installing rainwater collection and latrines. This begins a long-term relationship to develop a multi-phase site plan that includes dormitories, additional education facilities, and chicken coop and a piggery. Rural Integrated Development Program for Africa, RIDPA, asked AFH for help to design a school in Tanzania. We brought together two dozen architects and designers to research the case. We created a site plan to guide the development, a plan that serves the function while addressing the, need, the, uh, the use of resources and the cultural and community ideals. 10,000 Laotians live in Minnesota, refugees of the Vietnam War. The center that serves that community in, uh, is falling apart, with, that serves that community with cultural and computer training is falling apart at the seams from deferred maintenance. With a leaky roof, broken windows, and substandard heating, they reached out to AFH for help. 
In the summer of 2006, Architecture for Humanity Minnesota completed five design boards describing the needed upgrades on a, of the, for the cultural center shell, the landscaping, mechanical systems, and signage. With those boards, funds were raised for a new roof and new windows. Carpet was donated and a patio was designed, and that will be built this fall. Collaborating with the Pollard Family Foundation, AFH Minnesota is beginning work on a streetscape project near Cottage Park in North Minneapolis, an area of deep need within our community. And the whole project may include home fix-ups, rehab, new construction, and a community garden. This year, AFH Minnesota begins work on the 2009 Open Architecture Challenge to redesign the mobile classroom. We are teaming up with the University of Minnesota College of Design and the U.S. Green Building Council's Emerging Green Builders Program. We are now seeking a local school as a client. And we intend to get that project built. In 2007, AFH Minnesota saw a need. Voices of Change, a homeless advocacy group, managed day storage lockers in a St. Paul office building. The lockers were well used, but hard to clean and not great to look at. Voices of Change thought that the program could be expanded and improved with a little design help. Teaming up with the AIA Housing Advocacy Committee, AFH became the client in the annual Search for Shelter Design Charette. The resulting boards were used to attract a new host, and a building charrette will be scheduled for this fall. We're looking for help. In fact, a sample of that successful locker design will be on display at the first annual Architecture for Humanity fundraiser, take notes now, scheduled for Friday, September 12th at 7 p.m. at the Bedlam Theater. In this, and in all future projects, your participation in Architecture for Humanity is welcome. Whatever your skills, architect or designer, our work grows as people step up and volunteer. And as always, design like you give a damn.